So this is a bit of an update to DevPak 3 for the Amiga. This is um, an update to the video I did last time about just installing this on the hard disk. And it seems like after reading through the manual, I got a few things wrong. I mean, I did get it working, but it wasn't it wasn't quite right. It wasn't what I was supposed to be doing. Had to read deeper into the manual to figure out what was going on. Um, but let me first show you. One of the problems I was having, one of the things that was a bit strange was that there are these include files like exec include. These are the operating system include files. And this program was compiling without finding them. So I searched my entire hard drive for these files and they are not there. And I can tell you that yet this program is actually compiling. Let me just show you that. Oh, it's assembling. So that assembles and that file is not on my disk. So I'm thinking that's a bit strange. There's something funny going on there. Something's not right. How can it find these files when they're not there? So I started looking through the manual and I found this thing about pre-assembled files. Right, and let me just zoom and enhance. Let me just zoom and enhance on that. So what it says is when searching for an include files, Genam also looks for files with the same name as the include file, but with any extension replaced with .gs. So I was searching for like intuition.i and I wasn't finding it, but I didn't search for intuition.gs, which could also be there. This is assumed to be a pre-assembled symbol file table corresponding to that file name. So basically what it's got is it's got a system for pre-assembling some of these include files to make the compile time faster. Um, such a file is produced by output symbols option from the program menu or using the op Genesis option or GenSim option for the .gs file that produces contains the symbol file definitions for the absolute labels and macros that are defined by the include file. It also lists the files that the include file itself has included. So what I then found, realized what's happened here is if I go back to the program, what they've actually done when they've, they've set up, when they've given you the examples is they have a file called system.i and all that does is includes a bunch of the system files. Now it looks like whenever this was made, they actually had um, a volume called include 1.3 and then include in there. So they must have had that volume somewhere um, this thing there, they must have had that volume on the drive and then all these files were in there. So anything that's appeared in here can be compiled into this system.i. But of course, these files aren't actually there. Um, but if I actually quit this and have a look in the root folder here, there's a system.gs. So what they've actually done is they've taken the 1.3, some of the 1.3 um, in operating system include files, they've compiled them into this gs file and then they've just shipped that with the product and they haven't actually shipped the .i files. And what that means is these examples will actually all compile as long as they can find that system.gs file. So if I open up Hello World again. So when it looks for that file, um, if it can find that system.gs, it can then pull that pre-compiled file out there and it will be faster. So that's pretty cool. So that then made me realize that it must be looking for this .gs file somewhere. And I had a look in the settings here. If you go to assembler control and there it is, the headers. And I think headers is the GS file. I think it mentions this somewhere in the manual actually. If you know that your program is going to include a particular .gs file, then you can load it before assembly starts using the headers requester from the assembler control. So that's this thing um, or via the command line .h option. And if I look in here, there's that system.gs file. So that's how it's finding. Not only is that how it's finding all the include files, it's also the reason why it's 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 actually asking for this devpack 3 2 volume because it's got an absolute reference to it. So what that means is I don't actually need to do all that stuff I did in use startup to get to have this add this volume and map it in because I can just remove this. And what I found was I can actually just change it to just system.gs and just use that. And that will actually still assemble. Or will it actually one error header not found at line zero? That doesn't work. Oh no, it doesn't work because it needs to actually, it's referencing it from the hello world file. So actually it doesn't work. <laughs> um, how's it doing it there? It's, it's adding it as slash system.gs, so that must be referencing it. So it must be slash system.gs, is that gonna work? There you go, so that's reference to the executable itself. So it, 
so that's all I really needed to actually um, get this stuff to work. I didn't need, I need to change assembler control settings. I just needed to change that headers include, which is this pre-compiled, obviously the 1.3 headers that they've used. And um, I needed to change that. I didn't need to do all that stuff in my user startup. So let's get rid of that stuff I put in the user startup. Um, so if you look in, so I actually added, yeah, this stuff, I actually assigned that volume and assigned it to this thing here. So I don't need any of this. So all that stuff I did in the last video about assigning this in the user startup, just not required. So I'll save that. Right, now let me just reboot so it's it's got its old user startup. And we'll just check that this thing still actually compiles. So I've removed that stuff from user startup. I've done a I've done a fresh reboot. And if I go to if I launch dev pack and I open up one of the examples. So I'll open up the hello world. So it doesn't have that um, one point that dev, what was it, dev pack three volume mapped anymore. If I assemble this, ah, it's, it's actually asking me for it because if I just change these settings, yeah, it's referencing it because of these headers here. So if I just go back and say, hey, there it is, just use that instead. In fact, I said add, but I actually want to get rid of the other one. So just reference it like that. I'll say use on that. Does that assemble now? Oops. There you go. So that's all I needed to do. Didn't need to mess about with anything in the user startup. All I needed to do was do program, was do settings, assembler control, and change that headers thing there to slash systemgs. And it was going to find that pre-assembled 1.3 stuff, the 1.3 operating system includes. And that fixes everything. And to get that to save across um, when I restart it, you have to just hit save there, I think. So if I quit this now and reopen it, and then I reopen the example, hello world, and assemble that. And it just works. So don't need anything in the user startup. So none of this is mentioned in, in this manual about installing this to the hard drive, that it's got some weird paths that are set up. But that's the fix there, is just change headers to slash system GS. But in effect, really, you don't, you probably don't want to use these because I they're the 1.3 headers, so I don't actually want them. Um, so really what I want to do is get rid of this completely like that. And let's save that. And if I hit assemble now, it should just complain that those, yeah, error found at line 14. So it can't find it exec lib i. So what I really want now is I want it to tell it to use the Workbench 2 ones that I've actually taken off their disk and I've put onto my hard drive. So what I do then is I go assemble a control and I just add it to this include path. So I've got the, there's the includes for 2.4. So I say, okay, so I've just included that. It's weird that it's gone done slash slash, but that is my, is that saying, that's saying go back one folder and then go into the include folder. So if I say use that, it should find these now, but actually they're the Workbench 2.04 ones that I got off the floppy disk with this. And I can obviously get even later ones for 3.2 if I need them. So if we assemble that, and it's now much slower because now it's actually picking out those files and having to actually compile them each time. So it's a lot slower. It's probably like three or four times slower there. You really notice that if you're not using a 1200, but it's, it's slower every single time now, but it's actually using the, the, the actual include file that I've given it. And it's not using that pre-compiled one. So in effect, I can actually, by using this output symbols, which is what they say, I can actually make, um, one of those GS files for myself to speed up the compilation if I want to. Um, but that should run. So there it is, that's the same program I had before, but it's now compiled with the includes from Workbench 2.04. So I think that's that's my update basically, is, is that I just basically figured out how to install this a bit better and how to run it a bit better. And it's all based on this assembler control 
and probably getting rid of that system.js that they've added because it's it's actually just um, it's actually just um, you know, 1.3 files, and it's not really that much use. I think there's one I actually might have compiled myself by accident when I was testing something else. I think I actually accidentally compiled untitled with nothing in it. Um, but really, you don't want to be using that at all. You want to be using either, you know, the, the includes that are correct for you, uh, or you want to be using, you know, even later ones that have come off the Hyperion website or something like that. So that's how I'm getting it to work. And I just want to show that because basically it means that the install is a lot easier. All you've got to really do is drag dev pack onto the hard drive and then start it up, go into settings, change this include to the include folder that you've copied onto your drive and get rid of that headers thing. And that's it. It just works. So none of that's mentioned in the manual. The pre-assembled files doesn't turn up until page 94. And in the installation settings, um, I don't think that's mentioned anywhere. It's not really mentioned what they've done, especially with the examples um, to get those to work. Maybe it's mentioned somewhere. What's on the program disk? Um, it, yeah, it doesn't mention. Oh, there it does. System, it mentions system GS here. Pre-assembled system include file for use with the assembler. But it, it's not all the files and it's it's not really. I suppose it's really been done just to get the examples working, I think. But yeah, not worth using. But there you go. So I've got that set up a bit better now. And I kind of understand how to use this better. So that's my reasonably quick update on how to get DevPack 3 installed. The instructions are copy it onto your hard drive, go to settings, assembler, control, get rid of the headers, add in the path to your actual includes that you want to use. Say so use on that, go to settings, assembler, hit save, and that's it, you're done. You're ready to actually assemble stuff. And it's not as hard as I thought, but the manual, although it's a good manual, doesn't seem to be, you know, it's it's not that clear, I think. So there you go. Hopefully, if you ever want to try this out, that is your, or you want to try out DevPack 3, that is your path to getting this thing working and doing some old school programming on the Amiga itself. Crazy.